Like many former Soviet bloc countries, Ukraine gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991, but unlike many other such countries, Ukraine, more than most, has struggled with its independent state and has had barriers and hurdles other countries have not had. To explore these issues and many others, we bring you the 10 things you didn't know about Ukraine. For a long time, those familiar with Ukraine had dubbed the country the Africa of Europe which implies that it had similar problems, particularly in the realm of infrastructure, to many African countries. And to a large extent, this remains true to this day. This was even true in the days of the Soviet Union, when Ukraine was viewed as a quote-unquote problem region, more so than even the Central Asian regions of the Soviet Union. Of course, Ukrainians have had to struggle with more obstacles than many other former Soviet territories, from the terror of the Bolsheviks to the tyranny of Stalin, and the infamous incident at Chernobyl, but these things alone do not explain why Ukraine remains comparatively speaking backwater compared to other former Eastern Bloc countries. This has affected the infrastructure of the country above all in ways that would make Westerners shake their heads. For example, if you wish to ride a bus in Ukraine, you simply wait at the bus stop for an indefinite period of time because Ukrainians, sadly, have not yet discovered the use of time schedules, and thus, you wait until the bus you want shows up. In Kyiv, the metro is served by 40-style escalators that descend hundreds of feet into the underground with nothing to hold on to. Even Ukrainian automobiles fall behind Western standards, as most do not have seat belts in the back seats, leaving passengers at the mercy of the icy winter streets and Ukrainian international airlines. The main airline for the country has a bad and reliable habit of losing the luggage of their passengers. Eventually, Ukraine will grind its way forward into modernity, but when this will actually happen is anyone's best guess. This is more than just a myth and the research proves it. Ukraine has consistently been ranked among the top 10 countries in the world in terms of the beauty of its women. Ukrainian women are also proud of their femininity and dress accordingly. Sweatpants and hoodies would generally be last out of the closet when they are deciding what to wear. Perhaps one of the worst starvation events in the history of humanity, the Holodomor, which literally means extermination by hunger in Ukrainian, was an artificially induced mass forced starvation brought about by Stalin's collectivization program in the Soviet Union. Taking place between 1932 and 1933, the Stalinist regime carefully manipulated the accessibility of food in order to promote its ideological goals by seizing control of grain and food supplies. This carefully planned misdirection of food production and allocation eventually led to the death of millions of ethnic Ukrainians. No one knows the exact number of people who died during this tragic event, but most estimates lie between 2.4 to 7.5 million, with some going as high as 12 million people. The biggest issue concerning the death toll is the lack of documentation, as both the West and the Soviets try to cover it up. The West for reasons of moral failing, for not intervening to prevent the atrocity, and the Soviets for rather obvious propagandist reasons and reasons of state. As if the starvation had not been enough though, the Holodomor pitted Ukrainians against each other as times were so tough that cannibalism became a commonplace thing. Parents would eat the bodies of their children and relatives, and driven mad by ravenous hunger, people would form brutal and murderous gangs that would kill others, even their own family members, just to consume their flesh. The incidents of cannibalism were so bad that Soviet officials were forced to release posters stating, quote unquote, to eat your own children is a barbaric act. It is hard to imagine the brutality, desperation, and hopelessness that must have been present during the Holodomor that would drive humans to do such things. And perhaps it is even sadder that few, if any Westerners of today's age, know anything about it. Within the Slavic language group, Russian is in fact the odd one out. If you could have heard an ancient East Slavic tribesman, his speech would have sounded much more like Ukrainian than Russian. Indeed, Ukrainian shares many more linguistic features with Belarusian, Czech, Slovak, Polish, and Serbo-Croat than it does with Russian. Ukrainian and Russian are not mutually intelligible, the standard linguistic test for determining whether a language is a fully-fledged language in its own right and not a dialect of another. While many people in Ukraine have Russian as their first language, most people are bilingual in Ukrainian and Russian and will switch languages depending on who they are speaking to. 
Politics aside, the language issue has never been problematic in Ukraine. Ukraine is sadly one of the most corrupt countries in the world, and the results of 2015's Transparency International Corruption Perceptions Index, Ukraine was ranked 130 out of 167 countries investigated, tied with Paraguay and the Comoros, and in 2012, it was ranked one of the three most corrupt countries in the world, tied with Brazil and Colombia. The government itself has often been described as a kleptocracy, particularly in recent years, and contrary to the progress seen in many other Eastern Bloc countries, the corruption is not decreasing, but growing with each passing year. By far, the biggest problem to afflict Ukraine in this regard is the issue of bribery, which affects virtually all levels of Ukrainian life, from higher education to the justice system, law enforcement, politics, the business world, healthcare, social security, and beyond. Bribes are given to ensure that public services are delivered either in time or at all. Ukrainians stated they give bribes because they think it is customary and expected. Some of the biggest bribes involve more than $1 million. According to a 2008 Management Systems International Sociological Survey, the highest corruption levels were found in vehicle inspections at 57.5%, the police at 54.2%, healthcare at 54%, the courts at 49%, and higher education at 43.6%. On June 8, 2011, Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych stated that corruption costs the state budget $2.5 billion in revenues annually and that through corrupt dealings in public procurement, 10 to 15 percent, or $7.4 billion of the state budget, ends up in the pockets of officials. Corruption of this sort is probably the biggest issue facing Ukraine today, and if Ukrainians could overcome it, their country would likely see tremendous progress on numerous fronts. However, this does not seem probable, and Ukraine might be stuck in a trap of its own making for the foreseeable future. Ukrainian cuisine is always simple, never extravagant, and draws upon the limited food sources that are available in the region. Grains such as oats, barley, and kasha, which is a type of buckwheat, form one of the staples of the diet, along with animal meats such as pork and beef, particularly innards such as liver and kidney. Most dishes tend to be very heavy and are filled with fat and lard. Borscht is a popular soup dish, and there are 30 varieties of it in Ukraine. Borscht tends to be sour and contains beets, cabbage, potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, onions, garlic, dill, as well as meat and fish sometimes. Varanuki are dumplings that can be sweet and savory, sometimes filled with meat, onions, and potatoes, other times with fruit, cream, and sugar. And Pasca is an Easter bread made from simple ingredients such as milk, butter, eggs, sugar, and flour, and is served most often during the Easter holidays. If you are a Western European, the fake and superficial friendliness of your typical American might get on your nerves, asking how you are doing and other such inane questions with a gigantic smile plastered on their face. But if you were to ever visit Ukraine, you might be the one who is the odd man out, as Ukrainians are the complete opposite. Ukrainians rarely if ever smile, particularly in the winter months, and rarely laugh to boot. The reasons for this should be fairly obvious. Ukraine is a harsh and cold land, with little in the way of amenities, and few things to look forward to, so smiles and laughter must all be earned. In the West, a superficial smile might be an expectation foisted upon you for the sake of superficial interaction, but in Ukraine, it is a gift, both genuine and true. As befits the country, Ukrainians are heavy consumers of alcohol. According to the WHO, or World Health Organization, Ukrainians are ranked sixth in terms of alcohol consumption in the world. According to recent surveys, Ukrainians consume a whopping 13.9 liters per capita per year, and it only makes sense. Life in Ukraine is difficult, and the day-to-day -day grind is not easy, and alcohol consumption is a common means of coping in the country, which should surprise no one. The Republic of Crimea, officially part of Ukraine, lies on a peninsula stretching out from the south of Ukraine between the Black Sea and the Sea of Azov. It is separated from Russia to the east by the narrow Kerch Strait. In early 2014, Crimea became the focus of the worst East-West crisis since the Cold War, after Ukraine's pro-Moscow president, Viktor Yanukovych, was driven from power by violent protests in Kiev and Vladimir Putin convened a meeting which later led to the annexation of Ukraine into the Russian Federation. 
Kremlin-backed forces seized control of the Crimean Peninsula and the territory, which has a Russian-speaking majority, voted to join Russia in a referendum that Ukraine and the West deemed illegal. Ethnic Russians make up the majority of the population, but with significant Ukrainian and Crimean Tatar minorities. Even now, there is conflict, but Crimeans tend to consider themselves more Russian than Ukrainian, and most were very welcoming of the Russian intervention. Because many Western powers deemed the actions of the Russians illegal, they subsequently imposed heavy sanctions on Russia, many of which remain in place to this day. Perhaps more so than in any other nation on Earth, Easter eggs really matter in Ukraine, and they have special status and are called pisanki, and are decorated with traditional Ukrainian folk designs using a wax-resistant method. The word pisanka comes from the verb pisati, to write, as the designs are not painted on, but written with beeswax, the motifs that characterize pisanka range from animals such as insects, birds, fish, and serpents, to flowers and plants, and more. Many Ukrainians are very religious, and pisanki are an extension of that religiosity and their devotion to Christianity. For more top lists just like this, be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check out our other lists. And thanks for watching, and thanks for learning.